Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So last week I made a video where you guys sent me scenario suggestions for me to draw my OC season, but there was one in particular that I forgot to even include. So I was planning this one for quite a while and I can't believe I forgot to include it. So I'm going to import this meme template, which if you guys are familiar, this was like popular years ago. And I remember seeing it both on Tumblr and on DeviantArt. And I did do my research to try to see if I could find where the original came from, which I believe is from Tumblr, but I could not find the original artist. But I ended up scaling it up quite a bit so you guys can kind of see the difference. Now, unfortunately, this is gonna really botch the time-lapse footage quality but I really wanted to draw it in a bigger size. So I went ahead, changed the resolution alongside with the canvas size and then sized up the image. So that will be easier for me to put in detail and not have to work on such a small template. So while I am sketching, I am going to be including all of my human OCs. So Hansuke is not gonna be a part of this, but luckily this template had enough for seven OCs, which is good for the most part, but it would have been ideal if there was six because I did have to include Selwyn into this, even though he's technically not part of their universe. So to kind of further explain the current meme that I'm drawing on this template of is basically from my knowledge, this is kind of the Monopoly meme. And there's a bunch of these templates. I think it's known as like draw your squad. And I've seen these floating around like when I was younger and I never really took the time to even like do any of these meme templates with my own OCs. But I feel like this one was very easy for me to delegate who was going to be which pose. So for the two front facing characters of the template. So on the left side, I'm going to be having Moriko, which is who I'm currently drawing. And then on the right hand side, who's also very much up close and they're kind of like praying. And I thought it would fit Masaki the best because I feel like he would like chaos the least in terms of like, I guess out of my OCs, he's one of the people that I find a little bit less confrontational. I think Akemi might also be in that kind of realm as well, since he's a little bit more toned down and a little bit less exaggerated with expressions and stuff. I feel like Masaki feels more towards like happiness and cheerfulness and being like a little bit more overjoyed, if anything, but Akemi is a little bit more subdued. So I feel like Masaki would be perfect for this particular pose and just I don't know, it, it just kind of fit in my brain as him being this particular uh, character for this template. And then Moriko is the kind of like announcer or she's like playing the, yeah, I guess announcer would be like the best way to describe it. So she's kind of pointing at the scene. So in the back, it was a little bit hard for me to determine who was going to be this person, but I ended up drawing this person to be Selwyn. And as we get further back from the front, I am going to be following the template a little bit more closely just because some of the expressions are so funny and I didn't want to lose the integrity of that kind of derpy, simple, exaggerated expressions that the template has for the characters. So the one laying on the floor, I ended up making this character Selwyn. So I have not talked about Selwyn really all that much because he's not really a concrete character that I have like 100% where I know where I'm taking his character and story, like the direction of it. I said that in such a weird way. <laughs> In short, I will just say that based off of my friend's little Instagram story template alongside with a P crew or a pick crew, I made an OC which technically was before Kaisen. So there is going to be a little bit of overlap between their hair, but I ended up changing it a little bit. And because Selwyn and Kaisen will be set in different stories, there should be not really an overlap in aesthetic. So Selwyn is supposed to be part of like more of a magical school kind of-esque storyline because that's what my friend made the entire template based off of. I'll talk about him more once I can get more of a like concrete design for him and build his character a little bit more. But he's kind of like my stupid son kind of vibe. He's a little bit of a lazy idiot, that type. But uh, moving along. So as we are going backwards in the template, I thought it'd be appropriate to make Sato the winner, have her kind of like basking in her glory and 
what better person to be kind of like her accomplice or like also celebrating her win than Akemi. So I do have the two characters at the back being the ones in the sunglasses as Sato and Akemi because I just think their dynamic would be like this where he's like ultra super supportive of her and obviously Sato basking in her glory. Um, I just find it would be kind of like a cute dynamic too since I like I said in the past, I don't draw them enough together. I think I've only done, I think two drawings in the past last year. I think one was uh, like a Christmas drawing and then the other one was like a doodle I don't think I ever posted. And I seldomly like doodle them every so often. But for the most part, uh, I don't know. I enjoyed this one probably the most out of all the characters that I drew for today of my OCs in this template. It's just because I don't really draw that much like silly or like meme-ish kind of or like meme-ish meme-ish type of drawings if anything but it's kind of fun doing these templates there's like a bunch of other different squad like draw your squad templates out there so maybe i'll do more in the future but i thought this one would fit the best just because it did have enough for a lot of my ocs or i guess like my main cast of ocs because pretty much uh everyone is present minus hansuke who is like my little green cat mascot character but i had a lot of fun just playing around and thinking of who was going to be who now in jail I was kind of debating on, so the people that I was not sure who was going to be in what position was basically Koji, Kaisen, and Selwyn. Selwyn kind of had the highest chance of just filling up that third spot regardless of whatever it would have been because his character is not super concrete. But the more I think about it, I think him lying on the floor and being like, totally devastated or like having his brain being broken from the game. I think it makes the most sense. That or you can probably think of it like the kind of six of them were playing Monopoly and maybe he magically appeared and dropped onto the floor, which may be why he's so shocked. So in jail, I do have Kaisen in jail and then I have Koji kind of in disbelief, kind of uh, in shock or angry that he lost, I guess. And I'll do something fun for his, but I just want to be funny to put Kaisen in jail just because he probably didn't even want to play the game, yet he's stuck in jail. Because I didn't think it'd be nice to put Koji in there, even though I think his deadpan expression would also fit. And I also thought that... Oh, I forgot. Actually, there was another combination I could have done. So the person who is... I guess like kneeling and kind of like basking in their win. That person could have been Koji as well and then I would have had Sato being like the supportive person in the back or I would have had Sato be where she currently is and then have Koji be the one doing the, I don't know, like confettiing the little money on her and then it would be Akemi in jail and Kaisen on the floor and then I would have Selwyn in the back kind of uh, like it looks like he's in pain I guess was kind of the gist of how I was going to format everybody or I was going to have I didn't realize how many combinations I was actually de like deliberating between so the other one would have been um Koji holding the mic and announcing or like you know commentating on who was doing what in the Monopoly game or whatever or announcing the winner then I would have had the girls in the back doing kind of like the winner pose. So either Moriko winning and Sato like confettiing the money or Sato winning and then Moriko is the one supporting her. So it's kind of a few different combinations I think would have worked in terms of like the entire dynamic. But I don't know. I think the current one that I landed on for this fits the most technically in terms of their personality and... I guess like I do feel bad that I didn't end up drawing Koji's face all that much. So for the template, I ended up drawing Moriko and Masaki more or less in my style completely and I made their expressions a little bit less exaggerated obviously. So I'm going to paint them pretty much as normal. So you'll probably see a little bit later in the time lapse that I attempted to do line work for this particular piece. but. Because I, I don't know, I don't like my line work all that much every time I do it in 
Procreate and I'm a little bit iffy when I do it even like in Paint Tool Sai or in Clip Studio Paint but for the most part I just thought it'd be quicker for me to paint both Moriko and Masaki really quickly and I'm gonna still leave it a little bit more sketchier if anything but then the remaining OCs in the back I'm gonna leave very rough but there is a little bit of decisions that I end up doing that makes it appear a little bit more clean or makes it read a little bit easier in terms of the color and the lines so i'll talk about that when we get there for now i am just painting in moriko and i'm going to be painting in masaki which is what i'm doing right now and once i finished kind of doing the rough colors i will be merging the lines or like my sketch onto the colors now luckily i did separate everything into like more appropriate sections so because masaki and moriko are in the front i did put them on a separate layer and then i put selwyn kaisen sato and akemi on their own layer like all four of them together and then i put koji in the very back because i did want to put an effect on him because i thought it'd be just funnier since we can't see his face and i did struggle on his pose the most because i don't know if it's like how simple the pose was in terms of how they drew it on the template and me just trying to translate it i was just having a hard time imagining how it looks like koji or like how to make it look more like koji because i ended up also shrinking the figure quite a bit because koji is a like a kid so he is a like smaller stature he's a lot shorter than the rest of my cast here so yeah I, I, I struggled with his the most but i think like in the end when i put the effect on it it just kind of helps with the general mood for his pose so moving on to the rendering, like I mentioned, I'm going to keep things like somewhat rough and I didn't end up doing a whole lot of shading on certain parts. I think I forgot to add a lot more shadows to her tank top. I forgot to add some shadows to Masaki's sweater. So I'll probably pop them in like a very little amount of shadow just to give it a little bit more depth. But like I said, I don't really care to make this look super finished. Like, I think it would have been nice to be able to just because the contrast between like a meme versus like having something a little bit more polished would be funny but I decided that I didn't want to spend like too much time on this particular piece anyways and allow me that be a little bit more loose for future ones if I end up doing more draw your squad type drawings in the future and if you have any suggestions on ones that you've seen specifically do let me know and I'll try my best to look them up. I think besides the Monopoly meme that I've seen, the other one I've seen a lot is I think it's like the one where there's four people in a car. So I think that one's also a very popular one. There's probably a bunch of other ones as well, but I think that one could be also fun because I think I can imagine who is who. But you guys can also let me know who do you think uh, fits a little bit better in your own head headcanon for my OCs in terms of like who should have been which pose or like which combination you think would have fit the best because like I said I had a few different combinations that probably would have worked nicely but this one was like the easiest for me to imagine in terms of their personalities like I can't really think about too many of my OCs doing like the praying pose if anything like I think Masaki just fits it like I said Akami probably could have and maybe if I made it more of like a pained expression it could have been Kaisen but for the most part I think Masaki was the only appropriate one to be here but you guys can tell me otherwise in terms of your own perceptions of my OC's personalities I couldn't find the comment unless I like read it wrong or it was from like a different video but um another person also asked for me to draw them playing Uno which could be a very fun dynamic to draw my OCs in as well Oh, and the last one that I really wanted to do, which will include all of my OCs, but I'll probably have to think about it a little bit, but I think the idea is very cute. So someone suggested that I should try drawing my OCs in the way how my OCs would be able to draw themselves, if that makes sense. So like Masaki would draw a portrait of himself and I would have to draw it in a way that seems like it would be like Masaki's skill level or his interpretation or just the way how he would draw and some people thought because I've seen a couple of these comments before but I think there's two in particular so one was the suggestion about drawing OCs 
or like how they would draw themselves. And then another one was like they would teach Sato, I think. Akemi would teach Sato how to draw and all that because he's like into graphic design or like VCD. So that would be also fun to do. And I don't know. I feel like ranking them. Akemi would be at the top in terms of like, I feel like artistic abilities. And I feel like I would put Moriko next because at least in my head canon for her, I feel like she would be heavily into either kind of like makeup, hairdressing, fashion, kind of like that realm. So maybe even like, maybe she's like a personal assistant or she does like makeup artist or something like that. Something to do with like styling. So like maybe like some sort of stylist or something like that. Because one thing I would love to do is just do a bunch of like wardrobe changes for both Sato and Moriko. So it could be fun to do that. Oh, and I've seen people do this in the past as well. I think I'm just like letting my brain run right now, rampant in terms of like OC illustrations that I want to do in the future. So I've seen people do kind of like magazine covers for their like characters or like their own OCs, fan art of like existing OCs or I guess not OCs, existing characters like from different fandoms and stuff. And I think it's kind of cool to do that because it'd be fun to do like the posing and trying to do the design for the actual cover alongside like with text and stuff. So maybe I could do that for Sato and Akemi or even like Sato and Moriko probably. But let's talk about the drawing process a little bit before I get too sidetracked. So I ended up coloring Sato, Akemi, Selwyn, and Kaisen. And I did do all their colors together. So I was initially going to do Selwyn first and then render, do Sato, Akemi, render, and then do Kaisen last. But because they're kind of like sketch is all in the same layer, it was easier for me to color them all at once so that when I do end up coloring the sketch to change kind of like change the line work a little bit to be a little bit softer in some areas which I tended to make it look a lot warmer so you can kind of see like a reddish brown but it makes it a little bit easier for me to make the sketch appear a little bit more clean like I mentioned earlier I had kind of like a method in terms of trying to make these guys appear a little bit more finished compared to how I would actually do it. And the way how I did it is that I would try my best to vary up the kind of hue variation alongside with the value of my lines. So I'm still letting it be very rough and still kind of letting that warmish brown shine through. But where I could is that I would try to make sure that the lines just look clean enough. So I would make sure like stray lines were kind of cleaned up any of the colors that look a little bit too like blotchy outside of the areas I would clean up but some of the areas where like there's corners or like even just longer strokes I would try my best to use a darker color and just give a little bit more of that contrast to the lines so that it kind of gives a little bit of depth to the line work so it appears a little bit less flat in a way and I think that helps contribute to it looking a little bit more finished as well since I do have simple shading for the most part for all the figures so I feel like that helps a little bit it also helps prevent it looking too flat so if I did the opposite instead of leaving everything super light and bright and I did every outline super dark and bold and of the same kind of like line quality and value then everything will read very very flat and I feel like you can use that to your advantage but for something like this where I'm still making it still super sketchy and kind of not wanting to do like full render or like full cleanup on everything I think it's a little bit easier for me to just darken up some areas so that it creates a little bit of depth so that it draws your eyes in a different way rather than making everything read the same way and read very flat so hopefully that makes sense. I do this occasionally and it definitely helps like give a little bit of contrast as well in terms of the lines. So hopefully it kind of comes off that way in terms of how I approach the, I guess like for the most part, it works the best on Sato and Akemi, I think maybe because their color palette is also on the lighter side. <laughs> Oh, I also forgot to talk about the background. So for the background, I did not want to draw like any kind of like room or wherever they would be placed in. So I did a very simple kind of like warm to cool gradient 
by using some muted blues, a little bit of a muted orangey brown color, and then I used a little bit more of like the bluish purple color alongside with brown to kind of neutralize certain parts but i tried to make sure that everything looked pretty neutral in color since the template is in white i didn't really want to stray away too far from what the original template looked like oh so i'm adding the little bit of like that little vein popping emoticon emoji symbol that people usually use for characters like this so even though it's like not technically where a vein would be. I'm still putting it somewhere a little bit more visible, but in the end, I am gonna add like little um, sticker effect kind of things over top of everybody in certain places, just to give it a little bit more of that fun quality to it, make it a little bit more vibrant as well, if anything. So I don't know, it's just like fun to add kind of like doodling or sketching aspects to something like this, just because it is a little bit more on the looser side. So for Koji, I am going to keep the coloring pretty simple. I'm not going to really fuss with his lines either. I think I only ended up changing the line colors to be a little bit softer, but I am going to be merging his colors like right away with the lines because I am not going to render it. I am going to end up duplicating this layer. I'm going to go to motion blur, kind of pull up the motion upwards so it looks like he's like throwing his body upwards like he's currently in motion. So that's kind of like how I wanted to do Koji's uh, particular drawing for his anyways. But like I said, I'm adding little effects or like sticker like little details on top just to give it a little bit extra fun quality, if anything, and a very convoluted way on making an outline by duplicating your colored layer. Then you can gauge and blur it, use the automatic on the selection tool, and then you can invert your selection color fill and then you kind of have a little outline of whatever desired color you want but I think that's it in terms of what I did at this point so I'm gonna quickly show you guys the time lapse because unfortunately when I export the time lapse it does get super crunchy and I think it's because I sized up the canvas afterwards instead of starting off with a large canvas and then resizing the template so I think this will give you a better idea on how I ended up doing the entire drawing though. So hopefully it reads nicely. I do feel like Masaki is a little bit out of place just because it doesn't seem like he's interacting with the rest of them like uh, Moriko is because she's at least pointing at Selwyn who's poorly just laying on the floor there. But last but not least, I ended up wanting to place little text boxes everywhere just because it might be a little bit easier for people to identify who is who in the very end, especially because when I do post this, I think most people haven't really seen Kaisen, Selwyn, or Moriko, and I feel like also Akemi is a little bit foreign on my Instagram as well, so I feel like tags were a little bit more appropriate so people can identify them a little bit easier if anything. Adding a drop shadow and I think that's it for today's little drawing session. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do the Monopoly drawing your squad meme with my OCs and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!